This week, the Civil Aviation and Safety Authority took the unprecedented step of grounding an entire airline because of safety issues. Tiger Airways is set to resume flying next month. But even if it does return to the skies, it's doubtful the company's reputation can ever recover. In a moment, I'll discuss the situation with Alan Joyce of Qantas, but first, James Panicki reports the Tiger's problems could mean some serious upheaval for the leisure travel business. Volcanic ash, natural disasters, a soaring Aussie dollar, skybound petrol prices and a wounded tiger. No wonder Australia's domestic tourism industry has lost its groove. The risk level got to such a, 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 a stage that we could not allow them to continue on. Yet in spite of the doom and gloom, some investors are upbeat about aviation. One wonders why there's such negativity out there when, when the, the backdrop for sustainable broad earnings for the market seem to be quite intact. You may not like an industry per se, but there are times when valuations can be quite compelling. So why the optimism? When fuel prices went up last year, Virgin and Qantas shares began to plummet. Industrial unrest added to investor nerves, causing both carriers to drop a third of their value between October and June. Particularly late last year when fuel prices started rising quite aggressively, uh, up until the peak uh, in, say, April, May, uh, there's a severe underperformance in airline stocks because it impacts their profitability and up to about 30% that's impacted. So, so th there's some headwinds there, but they're an important cyclical sector uh, to be considering to, to invest. The other cost is labour. It's probably one of the reasons that the Qantas share price at the moment is so depressed because people are so uncertain of the outcome given the number of negotiations that Qantas are undergoing. Every company goes through EBA negotiations, you know, salary negotiations, conditions, all the rest of it. We're no different. We'll go through those. We're going through some at the moment. But I think you can resolve anything between any two parties uh, if you approach it in a very rational and pragmatic way. And while fuel prices and equipment are largely out of the airline's control, the main cost variable is labour, which explains why Qantas is taking such a strong stand on industrial relations. Right now, uh, Qantas have to dig in and fight these battles as unpleasant as they are. I mean, I think no one's going to argue that people shouldn't receive a pay rise, expensive place to live Australia these days. However, there has to be offsets, there has to be a trade-off in terms of productivity, because that's the only way Qantas can continue to compete. But whatever the reason for market caution in aviation, travel agents fear the possible loss of Tiger will compound the domestic tourism slump. Having Tiger in the market uh, is certainly good for competition. Uh, you know, when new carriers, uh, both domestically and internationally, come into the market uh, and open up new routes, uh, that's good for consumers because typically we find that uh, uh, there is some impact on, on prices. It becomes a little bit more competitive. Um, so, you know, Tiger moving out, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the, what the impact is for customers. Never, no. never, never. Tiger's troubles have given Virgin and Qantas shares a much-needed shot in the arm this week. That's because Tiger accounts for around 5% of domestic passengers. Its predicament will leave Virgin alone to slug it out with Qantas's growing discount carrier, Jetstar. Jetstar is one of the most hundred recognised brand names in Japan. So it, it shows you that it does have some cachet offshore um, and clearly it's a different business model to Qantas and it has more reach. It can do more things than Qantas can because Qantas's cost structure is so different to Jetstar. Tiger's grounding this week has kept public attention firmly focused on the cutthroat competition at the budget end of the market. But there's another battle looming. Virgin is preparing to take on Qantas's dominance of the high-flying business market those corporate customers who are prepared to pay more for better service. It's always difficult to take on uh, a large competitor uh, and this is no different. But the truth is that the market does want competition and you know I can tell you that on a daily basis, on a daily basis, I get either an email or a call from someone in the business community saying good on you and that's terrific, we've just flown your new product, it's fantastic and it's about time competition comes into that sector. They're going to that segment because uh, the corporate dollar is actually a good quality dollar and it's a good margin business. So time will tell, uh, they're doing everything they can to, um, to have a healthy competition with Qantas 
and I'm sure Qantas are quite happy with that and uh, relish the idea to, uh, to compete in, in return. The survival of Tiger Airways may ultimately be good for competition and consumers, but with no end in sight to the sluggish tourist market, Tiger's parent, Singapore Airlines, will need deep pockets to keep Tiger in the game.